The first thing I'm going to check on a P0442 code is the fuel cap. You can see I just opened my fuel door, get to the fuel cap, easy visual inspection first off. Make sure that the O-ring that makes the initial seal on the filler tube is good. There's no cracks on it. Doesn't look moist or anything like that. But another one inside the uh, gas cap right here is another O-ring or another seal. That could go bad as well. So usually with the P0442 code, if you haven't replaced the fuel cap yet, I always recommend replace it. Especially if you're running about 100,000 miles and it's a, a factory cap. Make sure that your filler neck is nice and perfectly circle. Sometimes when you leave your filler neck on there for too long, like we lean on them a little bit, it gets oblong on the bottom right there. So make sure that you have a knife, knife, nice perfect circle on your filler neck right there. That could be another issue. Again, rub your finger all the way around. You might have a little divot somewhere where you jammed the filler neck of uh, the filler hose and it just nicked it or something. That might be an issue. Just double check. Make sure all this is good. When you're tightening your fuel cap, make sure you always follow the direction on the cap. You can see this one says one click. Some say three clicks. Some say one click. Just follow the, the direction of the cap. You don't want to over tighten it or not put it on tight enough. Make sure you look for links in the description below to find like a code reader and parts and tools if you need any. And also let me know the year of the year make model of the vehicle that this video helped you on too. Under the hood, what can we take a look at? Here on your under hood label, it lets you know where your hose is, what hoses are and where they're at. So for this vehicle, I'm only looking for the emissions vapor purge solenoid right here. I'm going to check the hoses as best I can visually. Not with going under the vehicle, this is stuff that you could check at home. So locate the purge solenoid. If you can't find it, make sure you check my video library. I have a ton of videos on emissions components locations to help you get started on your DIY repair. So make sure you check out my video library. You can see mine's conveniently placed right here on the driver's side. Don't move too much to get to it, but you can see the engine cover pops right off, gives you way more access. You're going to check all the little hoses that go to and from, oh, you're probably over here, sorry, to and from your vapor canister and the hose that goes up to the intake manifold. All right, if there is any cracks, replace them. If you can, make sure you get a factory replacement. So you're going to follow those hoses as best as you can. Uh, if you have extra time, you might be able to, or extra time, if you have extra effort in you, I should say, you could remove the hoses. So if you needed to, you could remove this hose, which goes back to the canister, and it's going to vary in your vehicle, but it's about a quarter inch or a three eighths hose, somewhere around there. What you could do is remove this, and I would connect a hose to like a butt connector, a barb on there. So just blowing it with a bunch of spray, spray this with soapy water, blowing it and you're going to find the bubbles. I have a video of actually doing that on a uh, Dodge Caravan, I think it is, and I, I'm going to try to get the link going. If it's not up here in the upper left hand corner, maybe there'll be a link in the description. But you can see I actually remove the hose, I'm blowing it and then we find the leak by doing that and the bubbles come up and everything. So that's one way that you could diagnose a leak in these hoses. Also, your purge solenoid or the vapor solenoid could have a tiny little leak internally to where like a piece of dust or something got into it and it won't shut when the seal comes down and it's somewhere in there it's letting the vapors go by. So this could also be not sealing properly. To test these is pretty easy. If you disconnect your voltage and apply vacuum to it, it should hold vacuum. And same with the vent solenoid that's near the vapor canister. To test this, apply vacuum to it without any voltage and it should hold the vacuum. If you apply 9 volts, like if you have a, uh, a 9 volt battery, use the power and ground and turn that on and to open it up. Won't do damage to it for one, so you're not using 12 volts. You won't damage the solenoid. And also when you apply the 9 volts, it should open the solenoid and it should not hold vacuum anymore. So you could test the solenoid pretty easy. Same thing with the, uh, the vent solenoid, like I said. So hopefully you'll find a leak with these two tips. If this video does help you out, or if you have any more tips that might help somebody else, comment below. Um, it can't do anything but help. So 
Like, subscribe, share. If you know somebody who's working on their own vehicles, tell them about me. I probably have a video that can help them out. If you yourself have a question, make sure you ask. Comment below, send me a message, text me, check out the podcast. You can text me at 925-418-5096. I don't know how long that number will be good for, but text me, send me pictures of the problem, and I can do my best to help you out. Maybe one of these two videos right here might help you out on another DIY repair or maintenance procedure. I appreciate each and every one of you guys watching. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. I'll see you on the next, hopefully, helpful video.